Welcome back. So today we will be doing task <laughs> five. Task five is using shellcraft. Shellcraft is one of pawn tools, one of the pawn tools that we can use to generate shell codes. So basically, we're going to go over this task five and answer the associated questions. We switch on to the machine and log in. Was at Close this one, type yes, B U Z Z. Let's take this to the right. Okay, so we're in. Now, for this task, we go to intro. Go one more time to intro. Let's go to shellcraft. So we have four files. Here we have a C code of the vulnerable program. Intro to pawn final is the actual binary. Here we have a node and we have a script to disable ACLR protection. If we Display the note. Dear Buzz, for this blast phone tool challenge, you will need to disable ACLR. I have provided a script for you to do so, which you run as sudo without a password. So let's take a look at disable ACLR. So, as seen from the output, the script just actually disables the ACLR protection. The reason for that is we don't want this feature to be activated when we exploit the binary. So first thing, we run the script. So now we disable the ACLR. If we run check, check on the program. I want to take a look at the actual and active protections. So based on the output, we don't have canaries, we don't have an X, no PIE, and no RWX. So there is no binary protections on the program, which means we can just perform buffer overflow. Let's also take a look at the C code. So it's simple C code. First, it prints out, hello there, do you have an output for me? And it asks the user for the input. It calls out the start function. When the start function is called out, it defines a variable called input with 64 bytes at a size, and then it uses gets to retrieve the input from the user. So the problem here is we can, there is no check on the size. Uh, input by the user. If we put something more than 64, most probably it will crash because it's using the gets function which is which is vulnerable. So what we will do now? We will generate now a pattern of let's say 200 characters and then we will try to crash the application and see what is the instruction pointer value after the crash so generate the pattern with cyclic 200 characters okay now what we'll do here we will just output or redirect this output into the program itself so cyclic a file called attack and then or let's do it with GDP R 
вот так so we've got a segmentation fault and if you look at the instruction pointer it is overwritten with t triple a's if you look at the stack pointer this is the address of the stack pointer where the crash happened so typically what we want to do here we want to control the instruction pointer and then we want to let the instruction pointer execute our own shellcode by um, just navigating to the stack pointer so the stack pointer normally itself the variables are in the top of the stack so what we want to do we want to place the shellcode in the middle of the stack so for this to happen we're going to need a simple Python code to execute our own shellcode. So normally the shellcode will be a code that will generate or will spawn a reverse shell. So let me exit. And create nano. So we create our own script. Now we start with the line that will import the pawn tools from pawn import star. First we define the padding. So the padding is the space that we will use to reach the stack point the, to reach the instruction pointer. You know, we want to know how much space we need before we reach the instruction pointer. So basically to do that we will use the cyclic find as we explained in the last video. Cyclic find. So here we put the value that has overwritten the instruction pointer. We saw it was TAAA. Now this is the padding. Next we define the instruction pointer or the value that we will use to override the instruction pointer it's going to be p32 and we spoke earlier that p32 is just to make the value between the parentheses interpreted as hex instead of string so we want here to put the address of the stack pointer since we want to execute our own shell code we will want first to go to the top of the stack and then we want to use also an offset this offset uh, will be used to drive the execution from the top of the stack into the middle so we will need here the address of the stack pointer let's save this and look at the address so this is the address So we put the address here. And then we have plus. So here we have to add an offset. Normally, the offset could be 16 or 8 bytes. But for this challenge, it is 200. The offset here is used to move from the top of the stack, which is defined by the, this address, to the middle of the stack. So now after we found the space and after we navigated to the middle of the stack what we want to do now we want to um, just put some no operation or knob so basically um, the knob is kind of space holder that passes the EIP to the next space in memory so it's gonna slide all the way in the stack, all the way down till it reaches our shell code. So we define nope, slide. So the nope slide, we type it in hex, and then times 1000. 1000 actually is a number 
that works in this case. Normally, a knob of 10,000 or less or more, it is a, it's a matter of error and try. You have to try, you have to try with different values. For this challenge, 1,000 knob worked. Lastly, we define the shell code. So let's save this one and create the shell code. Okay, to create the shell code, we'll use a tool called Shellcraft. Shellcraft is a tool from Pawn Tools. Shellcraft. We define the architecture of the operating system. It is Linux, and then we define what the shell, what what kind of shell code we want. In this case, it will be a shell code that will return bash shell. So for that, we will use the exec ve function. Exec ve function takes two parameters. The first one, the path to the program that will execute. In this case, it has been sh. The next one are the arguments. The arguments will be sh for shell. And then we need dash p to preserve the permissions after we execute them. Okay, and then we type dash f and we put s just to, re to retrieve the shell code in hex. Uh, let me check. Okay, this seems fine. So type the shell code here, the value. Okay. Now the last thing is we create the payload. The payload will be the sum of all of these variables we have created. Padding plus EIP plus knob slide plus shellcode. So there is one thing mi missing in the script. The thing that's missing is the program itself that we will target. So basically, the script here will target the vulnerable program and will escalate the privileges. So we will want the script to interact with the program. For that, we will use the process tool to open the program and interact with it. So proc equal process. And here we execute the program. Next, after we ex after we let the script execute the program, we prompt here for receiving the output. Receive line. And lastly, we use also the proke to send the payload. <coughs> and then we spawn an interactive mode for interacting with our own shell. Let's see now. 
when we execute the code now, it should spawn a bash shell. I've got a problem. AOA why scanning string it work. Let's check that out. So here we got one code missing. So the script worked. As you can see, we have the interactive mode. If we type ID. As you can see, we were able to spawn a shell on the target system. And this is the root. If we go to cd root ls cat flag. And this is your flag. Let's go now and see the questions. So what does ACLR stand for? Address space layout randomization. Who owns the intro to pawn final? If we check li slash la the owner is root use check sec on enter to pawn final we knew that it was we knew that nx wasn't enabled please use the cycle tool and gtb to find the ip what letter sequence fills the ip we saw it was t triple a's run the exploits this is not necessary but this is the answer if you want it Now here it's asking about the shell craft usage. What was the function that we used to achieve or that used this set of parameters? It was exec VE. Run who am I once you have the shell, it was root and this is the flag. So that was for today. And that was a case where we use pawn tools to just take control over a binary and then to the whole machine. I will be making some notes about this room and publish it in the community channel for those who are subscribed. Thank you for watching.